army of the Lord. I've been trained with His holy word, girded with true gospel will be heard. I'm familiar with my inmate. His procedure is not new to me. His fiery dogs have been We extend greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and like to say good morning to you, and thank you for joining our morning worship service at St. James Cumberland Presbyterian Church in America. St. James is located in Decatur, Alabama at 920 West Moulton Street. We are the church that's preparing for the promise to return of Christ. So join us today as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace and happiness in that land. Well, there's 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 peace and happiness in that land
there's peace and happiness in their land. Oh, where I'm bound, oh, where I'm bound, yes, there's peace and happiness in their land. Lord, there's peace and happiness in their land. Well, there's peace and happiness in their land. Oh, Lord. Where I'm bound. Well, and I've got a savior in the land. I've got a savior in the land. Well, now I've got a savior in the land. Oh, where I'm bound. Oh, where I'm bound. Yes, I've got a savior in the land. I've got a savior in that land. Yes, sir. I've got a savior in that land. Oh, Lord, where I'm bound. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in with us for our devotion. May we pray. Our Father in heaven, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. God, we thank you for loving us so much, Lord, that you touched us this morning with a finger of love. And, Lord, our eyes flew wide open to a brand new day. Lord, a day that we have not seen, nor shall we see again. God, we ask you to please, Master, just come just as close as we can yeah, bear you. Yeah. Lord, we need you in this service. Lord, mm -hmm. we need you to lead and guide us. God, we need yeah, you yeah. to be part of it. God, your word teaches us that wherever two or three are gathered, mm -hmm. you said you'd be one in the midst. And God, we're so glad and so thankful that you're not like we are. We are bound by time. We are yeah, bound by yeah. a location. But God, you can be everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. So Lord, whenever we are watching this, whenever we are being a minute part of this ministry, God, you'll be right there in the midst. Yeah. God, lead and guide us down through the treasures of your word. God, we ask a special blessing on our pastor. Lord, bless Pastor Jones. Enable him to stand and to preach a bold gospel, one by the dead, buried, and risen Savior. Lord, we ask a special blessing on his companion. Lord, prop them up on every leaning side. Lord, enable them to continue the ministry that you've called on them to do. God, bless St. James. Yeah, yeah. Bless this church. Lord, you know what this church is standing in need of. Lord, mm -hmm. you know all the things about this church. Lord, help us all to be a part of your ministry. Help yeah, us yeah. all to be about your business. But Lord, not only blessing St. James, but God bless every church door yeah, that's yeah. opened up in your name. Because God, we're not in a competition between mm -hmm. one another. We are all just servants trying to yeah. tell a dying world about a Savior that can save anyone. Mm -hmm. For Lord, if there's someone who does not know you in the pardon of their sin, Please, God, touch them right now. Please, Lord, Lord, let them know that they will need a Savior on their side. Lord, mm -hmm. if there's someone who has strayed away. Lord, touch them and let them know yeah, that you're yeah. standing at the door and knock. They can come back to you, Lord, because, God, you are a forgiving God. Mm -hmm. You are a merciful God. And, God, you will wipe the slate clean. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, and we can be presented as though we have never sinned because, God, your blood, your, the blood of your loving son covers a multitude of sin. Yeah, God, yeah. thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for him coming, suffering, bleeding, dying. But God, thank you for him not mm -hmm. staying dead. Because on that third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. Lord, bless us in all the endeavors in which you've called upon us to do. Mm -hmm. But not, not only blessing your church. God, we're asking you to please bless, Master. Bless our communities. Yeah, Lord, you see yeah. all the things that's going on. Lord, you know everything. Yes, the virus is running rampant. But, Lord, you also see that evil is also running rampant. Mm -hmm. God, we ask you to please buke Satan in everything that he's trying to do. Because we want to pray for our children. Yes, they are here in our area. Lord, there's a spike within the pandemic. But our children have gone to virtual learning. Lord, enable them to learn what, they, what you would yeah, have them yeah. to understand. Lord, enable them to still be able to have the relationship. Please enable them to be able to grow and to mature. But Lord, not only here in this area, but everywhere, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, you know all the situations. We're waiting for you, Master. We're trusting on you to move this virus out of our way. Because God, we know that you're teaching us. You're letting us know, Master, that it won't be long. God, yeah, you're letting yeah. us know. We see how evil is doing all manners of things. 
but God, we're trusting in you. We know that you love the poor. We mm. know that you love the oppressed. We know that you love the downtrodden. And yeah, so, God, yeah. we're going to do everything we can to lift them up and for us to be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Mm. God, this and many other blessings we're asking your son, the Lamb of Judah, Mary's baby's name, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name, we ask. Amen. Amen. We thank Elder Thomas for asking God to be a part of what we're doing. We can't do anything without God. It is in him that we live, we move, and we have our being. Thank God that he's faithful. Promise he never leave us, nor will he forsake us. And as we live for a while, we can see when we have our eyes open that God is faithful to his word. He always does. But he said he would do. So we're back virtual now, but we thank God for providing the tools that we need to continue to try to minister. God can work through any circumstance, and he can touch a heart any kind of way that he chooses to do so. So we pray that God will continue to use us at this time in the history of the world. Go with me this morning to the prophet Jonah, Jonah, the first chapter. We're going to start reading at the first verse of Jonah, the first chapter, verse 1. And it reads, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up and flee to Tarsus from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarsus. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them to Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. Few minutes this morning, I want to ask the question. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We understand that God has a special love for all of mankind. We cannot afford to project the feelings of a lost world on our God. There are no unimportant people in the eyes of God. It is impossible for us to sink so low to where God will stop loving us. Under his guidance, God made us in the image and the likeness of himself. And under his guidance, we were given dominion over everything that he created. Yet, somehow, the people of the Lord have a tendency to rebel against the will of God. There are times when we will place our own wills and our own ambitions over what we know is the will of the Lord. We have a large capacity to disregard the thoughts of God for our own thinking. Jonah was a man that cast aside God's will for what he wanted to do. The Bible says, we just read it, that the word of the Lord came up to Jonah, telling him to arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. So Jonah had clear instructions on what the Lord wanted him to do. He knew, he knew what he heard from the Lord. But Jonah didn't like his assignment. Instead of Jonah doing what God told him to do, he rose up and he fled to Joppa, thinking he was leaving the presence of the Lord. He got, when he got to Joppa, he bought a ticket, paid his money, and got 
on a ship headed to Tarsus. The word of the Lord did come to Jonah. He had no doubt in his mind what God wanted him to do. But he made up in his mind that he would, didn't want to see the pe people of Nineveh saved. He wanted to see them destroyed. Nineveh was a part of Assyria. Assyria was a bitter enemy to God's people. And since Nineveh was their enemy, Jonah did not want to deliver a message of hope to them. Uh, he wanted to see them totally annihilated. God told him what he wanted him to do. We might say it's crazy not to do what God says when we understand what he wants us to do. How could Jonah ignore God and do his own thing? Well, I want to tell you this morning, there are people all over the church who know what God wants us to do, but still they want to go in the opposite direction. Uh, we need to take a close look at this event to see the danger of casting aside the will of God. We're talking about, can you hear me now? First of all, when we ignore God's will, we're moving away from his plan for our lives. When Jonah disobeyed what he knew God wanted him to do, he was moving away from the plan of God. Human beings are given the ability to make choices. God didn't make us robots that we, where we're under control of a superior being, but he gave us a free will. We can choose to do God's will, or we can choose to do our own will. God lets us know his will and the part that he wants us to play in fulfilling his will. But then it's our choice to obey him or to do our own thing. Every time we choose to do our own thing, we're moving away from the plan of God. When Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he was moving away from the plan of God. When jealousy caused Cain to kill his brother Abel, he was moving away from the plan of God. Proverbs 14 and 12 would have us to know that there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. That lets me know that we cannot use our own human reasoning and logic and perform the will of the Lord. We just can't do what we think makes sense and be pleasing to God. We can't govern ourselves by what other people are doing and please the Lord. You see, God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than our ways, and his thoughts higher than our thoughts. We got to submit to God's will and not our own if we want to please him. We just can't base what we do on how we feel and be pleasing to the Lord. God can see better than we can see. And he has much more information than what we have. We got to remind ourselves that God is Lord over our lives and, and we are his servants. We need to be obedient to the will of the Lord and not our own. When Jonah got the instructions from God to go to Nineveh and warn them, he chose to go in the opposite direction. And he started moving away from God. Kept on moving away from God. Went down in the bed of the ship and fell fast asleep. A storm rose up on the water that day. And everybody started calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, Jonah ignored God's word. They told him, why don't you rise up and call on your God? Jonah said, I don't have to call on God. I know I'm the problem. God is punishing you because of what I'm doing. But then secondly, ignoring the will of God 
comes with consequences. I remember when I was a child, we were well aware that doing our own thing instead of following our parents' instruction came with consequences. Uh, we didn't under, I didn't understand it back then, but I know that mom and daddy wanted to instill in us the danger of disrespecting authorities. You see, they loved us and they would rather correct us themselves than to have law enforcement or the penal system to correct us. They wanted to, us to see how to survive on a job. They wanted to train us how to live among our fellow human beings. They wanted us to avoid the consequences of going against the grain of the power structure because they knew that that we were falling into hands that didn't love us like they did. The question is, can you hear me now? I can remember hearing Mama call and give us commands. And if we didn't move far enough, she would then cry out, didn't you hear what I said? We understood it was time for us to comply to her desires. We knew that if we didn't, it came with consequences. She knew how to help us to hear what she was saying. Well, as I look around in the world today, I just believe God is asking us right now. Didn't you hear me calling you? I love my word for you to know my will for your life. Did you hear what I was saying? I called preachers and teachers to explain plainly my will for your life. Did you hear what I was saying? I sent the Holy Spirit to live down on the inside of you, to guide you. Are you were you listening to him? Evidently, you were choosing to ignore what I was saying. I've been holding back my wrath, but now it's time for me to correct you. Proverbs, the third, third chapter, will have us to know that my son despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom God loves, he corrects. Even as a father, his son, that he delights. I just believe we're going through a time of correction. When I look around at the COVID virus right now, running rampant in the world, that tell me that we're being corrected by the Lord. The best scientists in the world came up with cures that was revealed to them by the Lord. But the hardness of the hearts of men are refusing to take advantage of it. That tells me that we're under God's correction. The political system today is coming up with things that will help those who are disadvantaged to live a better life. But there are those around them that are standing in the way causing it to fail. That makes me know that we are under the chastisement of the Lord. There are those who are claiming to represent God and his church, who are standing behind those who are exercising cruelty and evilness that tell me we're out of order with the Lord. There are preachers in the pulpit every day that are just like Jonah. They're refusing to warn the people of the Lord. They are only thinking about themselves Isaiah described them in the 56th chapter. He called them blind watchmen. Called them dumb dogs that will not bark. They are sleeping, lying down, and loving slumber. In other words, they are useless. You don't need a watchdog that cannot bark when there is danger approaching you. Oh, you don't want one that's too lazy to protect you. From the peril, God wants his preachers to cry out and spare not. And lift up your voices like a trumpet and tell the people they're transgressing. God is looking for his preachers not to try to appease the people, but warn the people of the danger they're about to destroy. God is asking his church today. Can you hear me now? Can you see where you're going wrong? 
Can you understand my will for your life? It's time for the church to come back to the Lord with our whole heart. We need to know that God is looking for us to drop our plans and to adopt his plans. But then finally, we have a God who is always willing to restore us back and to a right relationship with the Lord. Jonah did disobey God, and it caused him to end up in the belly of a big ship. Jonah said, I cried out to the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell. I cried out, and he heard my voice. The good news is this morning, God specializes in restoration. It reminds me of the prodigal son that went away in a far country. He can testify that God is a God who will, dest- will restore us back into a right relationship with him. He ended up in a far country and he started being in want hired himself out to a man who was tending swines, and he started feeding the swine. The swine's food looked so good because he was hungry, and then he, he wanted to eat the slop from the hogs, but then he came to himself, made a decision, I'm going back home and confess my sins to my father, The Bible tells me if we confess our sins, God is faithful and he is just to forgive us of all our sins. Then he will cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. We need to humble ourselves and come back unto the Lord. When this boy humbled himself, he got close to home and he saw the figure of a man standing in the street. As he got closer, he noticed he looked like his father. As his father started looking at the figure coming toward him, he said, that looked like my son. He ran to his boy, put his arms around him. He kissed him on his neck. The Bible tells me the boy started confessing his sins to his father. Didn't use the advantage of his father's excitement to see him, but he told his father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your high servants. The father wouldn't hear it. Called his servant, told his servant, bring me my best robe. Put it on my son. Bring me a ring. Put it on my son's finger. Get him some shoes. Put it on his feet. Kill the fat of calf. We need to celebrate the return of my son. My son was dead. Now he's alive. My son was lost. Now he's found. St. James, I want to remind us, it doesn't matter how far we wander away from the Lord. We can always come back to the Lord. We need to turn around. And come back to the Lord. I know, I know we've been drawn away from the things that we see in the world. But God is able to allow us to come back to him. I know we've allowed hatred. I know we've allowed bitterness. I know we've allowed the things other people are doing to cause us to walk away from the Lord. But God is saying, come back to me. I'm able to restore you back into a right relationship with me. We ought to get out of the hall pen and go back home. God is standing with outstretched arms telling us to come back home. And we'll come back to the Lord. God will cover us with the blood of Jesus. And we'll come back to the Lord. God is willing to justify us. It's time. Yes, it's time.
for us to come back to the Lord. If we come back to Him, He is able to wash us whiter than snow. We need to come back to the Lord. If we come back to Him, we'll be coming under love. If we come back to Him, we'll be coming to mercy. If we come back to the Lord, we'll be coming to grace. God loves us with all His heart. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I, then I will hear from heaven. I forgive their sins and I heal their land. It's time for us to come back to the Lord. I don't know about you, but I wonder far away from home. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin, too long I tried. Now I'm coming home. I wasted many precious years. Now I'm coming home. But I repented one day with bitter tears. Now I'm coming home. My soul was sick and my heart was sore. Now I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Never, no more to roam. Open wide the arms of love. Now I'm coming home. Jesus Christ made it possible for me to come back home. He died that I might live. He died, gave me a right to the tree of life. And one of these old days, I'm going to get a chance to go home and be with the Lord. Some glad morning, when the life is over, I'll fly away. Going to a land, no storm clouds rise. Going to a city that has foundation. Three gates in the east, three gates in the west, three gates in the north, three gates in the south. One of these days, I'm going to leave this troubled world behind. Going to a place where Jesus will reign forever and ever. I'm going to reign with the Lord because he told me, suffer with me. You'll reign with me. I'm looking forward to that day. One of these days, this martyr is going to put on immortality. One of these days, this corruption is going to put on incorruption. When this earthly house of this tabernacle shall be dissolved, I have another building. I have another building. House of God, not made with hands. I want to know, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord? I want to see you on the other side. We're bound our burdens in the heat of the day. But one of these days, one of these days, it's going to all be over. I'm going up to see the Lord. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. There we shall ever and ever and ever be with the Lord. I'm looking forward to that day. I want to see Jesus for myself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Taking care of my sin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wiping the tears from my eyes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Making my enemies leave me alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Being with me when I couldn't take care of myself. Thank you, Lord. You are all powerful. Thank you, Lord. All knowing. Thank you, Lord. Ever present. Look from everlasting to everlasting. Thank you, Lord. Giving me friends on this side. But I have a friend who is better than any friend that I have on this earth. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins grieve the bear. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything, 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 
everything to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord. 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 Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I know you see the COVID virus. Can you see me now? I know you see those proud boys, all kind of enemies in the world. Can you hear me now? Had it not been for the Lord on our side, he would have been destroyed a long time ago. It's time for us to open our ears and listen. He said, watch as well as pray. If you read the word of God, everything that he said thousands of years ago, we're seeing them right now. We better listen. We have a responsibility to God's people. God knows we did not want to close the church to our members. But God left us in charge of his sheep. Some people think it's all about just the spirit. But God is concerned about the whole man. And there's a virus running rampant. And people all around are catching it. So contagious until it's getting past all kind of vaccinations. I'm concerned about your spirit, but I'm concerned about your flesh also. I've been to the graveyard too many times. We better wake up. God wants us to help him get this harvest in. He's doing it, but he wants to work through us. Don't you want to be used by God? Don't you want God to be pleased with your time that he gave you? And I want to talk to those who have not yet Accepted Jesus Christ. Maybe you had no intentions of hearing what I have to say. You just got, got to flipping through your tablet, or got to flipping through your phone, and just something drew you to me this morning. And something penetrated your heart. I want to tell you that God is just reaching for you. God is using the Holy Spirit to draw you. Don't harden your heart. Give your life to the Lord. You might be a millionaire. Maybe you have all kind of power to where you can command people. But you still feel an emptiness in your heart. I want you to know that things on this earth cannot totally satisfy you. We were not made to live in a, an existence like this. When God made this world, he put us in a perfect existence. We had a perfect habitation. But sin caused things to get out of whack. And I don't care what man does, it will never be straightened out until God straightened it out. But God made it possible for us to have access to that existence that we lost. The tree of life was in that garden. And when man sinned, God drove us out of that garden and put cherubim with flaming swords to keep us out of that garden. But Jesus came and he gave us access to that tree of life once again. So all you got to do is just admit that just like every other man has ever lived but Jesus Christ, I'm a sinner. Satan wants you to think you're so bad until you're not worth saving. He's a liar and the father of lies. We all are just like you are. The only difference between me and the worst sinner in the world is that I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And he applied the blood that he shed it on the cross to my account. There are, are no little sins and no big sins to God. We classify sins. But anything that's out of the will of God will cause us to go to hell and burn throughout eternity. But God loved us so much until he provided a way for us to reestablish our relationship with him. I want to explain it and make it plain to you. It's not about how good you live. Some people say, let my good outweigh my bad. That's, 
you, you can never live good enough to be righteous in the eyes of God. Our righteousness is just like filthy rags in God's eyesight. And we needed a, an advocate for us. And God came himself and wrapped himself up in flesh. We had to have another man to go on our bond because we sinned in the flesh. Jesus Christ wrapped himself up in flesh. And he came to be our advocate. And he allowed all of our sins to be placed on him. And God took out the punishment that I was supposed to bear and put it on his son. Jesus bared our sins. He died in our place. That's the difference between a Christian and one who do not know God. Every one of us had to have the blood of Jesus applied to us for us to stand before a holy God. God is too holy to have any communion with any sin. He's a God of justice. He has to punish sin. So what you ought to do is just put yourself on the mercy of God and say, Lord, I know I've messed up. I know I'm not where I need to be. Will you come into my life? If you say that and mean it with your heart, God will save you right where you are. And then you need to attach yourself to the family of God because we're not made to live by ourselves. We were made to be just like God. God is, is three persons. God has never been alone. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are so much in agreement until they're one. He made us to have communion with him and also to have communion with each other. I'm the pastor at St. James, but I need my members to lift me up sometime. I need to hear from them every now and then, just like they need to hear from me. There is no lone soldiers out here. We need each other. So attach yourself to a Bible-believing church so that you can get strong. When, when a baby comes into the world, he needs to be fed, needs to be cared for until he can stand on his own. We need each other. That's why we hate to have to be separated physically, but we can still be together spiritually. Will you come today and give your life to the Lord? We want you to be a part of our family. God is our Father. Jesus is our elder brother, and we're brothers and sisters in Christ, children of God. Good to have a Father like God who has all power, always with us, and he knows everything. We thank God for you tuning in today. We're going to continue as best we can to minister just like we did when we were in the building. We're having to do it a little bit different now. We, every Sunday morning at 9.30, just like we were doing before the pandemic, we will be uploading a Sunday school lesson. It'd be good for all, us all to hear the same teaching. Every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we'll either be uploading a sermon, or when we get back in the building, we will be here to, together. We'll let you know when and how we're going to do it. And every Wednesday, a Bible class will be uploaded. We want to stay together so we won't have to come together when this is over. God is going to move us out of our way eventually. But I just believe that he's just waiting for us to get back in line. God needs a healthy church right now. He needs one who has the power to reach outside the walls. We come into this building to build ourselves up to go out and serve. But we can't be slew-footed. We can't be walking both sides of the fence. God wants us to come back to him. And I said us with our whole heart. I'm not just pointing at one person. I'm talking to all of us. We know ourselves the things that are inside of us that's not like God. And we ought to ask God to give us the strength to get rid of it. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we thank you for using a vessel like me, Father to deliver your word. And Lord, I realize that I can't do it without you, Father. But you called me to this task, Father. And you promised you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And you've been faithful to your word, Father. So we thank you for being our God, Father, and for 
allowing us, Father, to be used by you, Father. Lord, we ask you to speak to your people through your word, Father. And Lord, let your word have its desired effect, Father. Penetrate the hearts of every one of us, Father. Lord, you know what each of us are going through right now, Father. And Lord, you know what we are like when we are away from the crowd, Father. You can see down in the deep recesses of our hearts, Father. We ask you, Father, to please penetrate us, Father. Let us know that you are God, and let us submit to your will, Father. We pray for those who are sick, Father, those who are bereaved, Father, those who are struggling financially, Father. And, Lord, we ask you, Father, to help St. James to be that city on the hill that cannot be hidden, Father. And Lord, as we leave this place, we ask you, Father, to continue to let your Holy Spirit dwell among us, Father, that we might be lights around this sin-cursed world, all going in different directions, Father, but that's to let your Spirit be in different places, Father. You place us where you want us to be, to be a witness for you, Father. So let us be a witness on our jobs, in our homes, and everywhere we go, Father. Not by words, but by deeds, Father. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his holy presence Rest, root, and abide with us, henceforth, now, and forever. Let every heart say, Amen. May God bless and keep you, is my prayer.